Hi, this is Shubham from Moments View, and today in this podcast we gonna discuss everything related to TDS on fixed deposit interest in India. Over here we going to discuss the meaning of this TDS timeline available taxation, when you have to file the return, various deductions available, as well as how you can plan your tax planning for the purpose of FD interest. But before starting that, if you want to read the full article about this, then the link of article is provided in description. Also, if you want to watch a quick summary video of less than 90 seconds then subscribe to our youtube channel monisu so let's start as an investor you can choose from many options to earn returns bank and financial institution provide various schemes with the different benefits returns based on various risks one of the options preferred by most individual is a fixed deposits in india so here is a question what is a fixed deposits a fixed deposit is a way invest your saving with banks or other financial institution here you can put a certain amount that gets locked up till a maturity this maturity period can be of any duration depending on the provisions of financial institution the interest rate is higher than the regular saving account and varies depending on tenure of your selection however once you are have opened a fixed deposit the interest you earn throughout its tenure with the same it is not affected by any interest rate fluctuation hence the theme is a fixed deposits on maturity you receive the principal amount invested and the interest on thereof. This brings up the question how to pay a tax on these income. Now let's discuss the provisions related to this. How is a tax levied on fixed deposit interest? There are tax and fixed deposits that you can claim deduction under section 80C while filing your income tax return. However, you are liable to pay tax on the fixed deposit interest. Interest income comes under the heading income from other sources. In your income tax filing you must add this amount while calculating your total gross income as it is fully taxable the rate of tax apply depends on your tax library apart from this the bank may charge TDS that is tax deducted at source on your interest income so now calculate how is a TDS is calculated on fixed deposits interest banks are liable to deduct a TDS that is tax deduction as a source on a fixed deposit interest when the interest amount exceeds rupees 40 in case of a senior citizen, the limit is pushed to rupees 50,000. No TDS is deducted if the amount earned is less than the prescribed limit. Moreover, post office do not deduct TDS if you start an FD there. The TDS rate applicable is 10%. However, in case if you don't have a PAN details, then the TDS will be deducted at 20%. Now let's discuss what is TDS returns has to be made. There may be a situation where a total income you earn comes under the exemption limit. According to the latest tax regime, the income under Rs. 2,50,000 is non-taxable. This limit is Rs. 3 lakh for senior citizen. However, the interest you can earn increase 40,000 then there is a taxability. In such case, if the bank deduct TDS, you are eligible to claim the refund. To ensure that the bank does not charge you a TDS, on your interest income you must inform them upfront for this you can submit a form 15g as well as 15h these are basically a forms related to disclosure of income so that the pay won't deduct tds now let's discuss what is the timeline for the payment of taxes if your total income become taxable when you add fd interest you must pay tax on the interest by 31st march of the financial year moreover you may may be required to pay an advance tax in certain cases then based on your other income you should pay taxes as an advance tax quarterly fixed deposits come with a fair share financial as well as tax benefit however if you plan your fd well you may end up saving more on taxes now let's discuss how can you reduce a tax on your fixed deposits over here basically you have a four ways to reduce your taxes on fixed deposit interest the first one is ensure timely submission of form 15g and 15h if your total income does not exceed the basic exemption limit you are required to pay your income tax however your bank may still deduct a tds for the same but if you file form 15g and 15h beforehand then they won't be able to deduct that form 15g and 15h are basically in declaration forms where you provide your income details so that payee doesn't deduct a tax the second option is a spread your 
FD to a different bank. TDS is charged on your interest income only if amount exceeds rupees forty thousand and rupees fifty thousand for a senior citizens. However, this limit is different for branches as well as separate banks. So, if you divide the total amount you wish to deposit over a several branches or banks, then the chances of a TDS is a lower. It is only done when the amount crosses the prescribed limit at a single branch. For instance, if you wish to put a rupees ten lakh fixed deposit at six point five percent interest per annum, this would fetch rupees sixty five thousand as an interest. On this, the bank would charge a ten percent TDS, amounting to rupees six thousand five hundred. However, you can divide this amount between the two banks, five lakh each. So the interest amount will be thirty two five hundred, which is below the prescribed limit of forty thousand. Therefore, a no TDS, and you save rupees six thousand five hundred. The third option available is invest at the right time. Choosing the right time to invest can help you to save tax on fixed deposit interest. If you open an FD in the middle or towards the end of a year, the overall interest come may be divided into two or so separate years. Since TDS is charged every year, it may reduce the interest income considered in a particular year. The fourth option available is invest in the name of a multiple individuals. If you are set aside an amount, if you want to invest in FD, consider opening it under a family member's name. This can be your parents, spouse, or even children. If their total income is not taxable, you can save on income tax. However, the income tax act has a list of a provision for clubbing of income. In such situation, their income may be clubbed with yours. So now let's discuss what is a bottom line over here. Fixed deposits are a great way to channelize your saving to earn a stable return. It is a free from interest rate fluctuation and provide higher returns than a saving account. However, you must pay a tax on fixed deposit interest depending on certain prescribed limits. Limits, that is forty thousand for general public and fifty thousand senior citizen. Make sure that you are familiar with a latest rule. Invest in a way that you can minimize your tax liability. If you want to read the full article about this, the link of our article is provided in description. Also, if you want to watch a quick summary video of less than ninety seconds, then subscribe to our YouTube channel Moniestu. Thank you guys for joining with us over here. Shubham from Moniestu signing off.